everyone and welcome to this video on further maths. Yes indeed, further maths over here in Australia and it is really good to see you. What am I dealing with this time? It's the log scale to display data. So using the logarithmic scale to display data and you're going to say what on earth is that all about? Well basically we can use a different scale because sometimes numbers get too big and we have to sort of fudge them. So if you're following along with the Cambridge Further course, then this is the video for you. It's really good to see you. I am Darren, otherwise known as the Maths Guru. And if you're new, can you do me a massive favor? I am a small person trying to do a very large job. Believe it or not, there is me sitting in a room talking to myself. No recording crew, just me. And it's hard work, but it makes it all better if you can subscribe by clicking that red arrow, whatever it's pointing to, because it makes me know that people are actually watching these videos. Greatly appreciated. And my lessons are a mixture of humor, real world, and hopefully some freaking awesome teaching, if I do say so myself. Now, I normally start with a recap, and this stuff is in fact building on all the stuff we have done before. So there are previous videos that you can load up in the playlist on YouTube or on mathsguru.com, the website that basically just holds all this stuff for you. And if you don't know, we're already dealing with the core data analysis part of this course, which is dealing with categorical numerical data and how to display it. Now we're almost at the end of this actual chapter, which is tying in very well with the Cambridge Essentials, uh, sorry, the Cambridge Further Textbook series. What we have to do though, and it comes up over and over again, is deal with logarithms. I'm gonna sort of explain to you why we need logarithms. Uh, it's also, funnily enough, on the Math Methods course. Don't switch off, it is fine. It's actually a relatively simple concept. Uh, concept. So why on earth would we need to use something called logarithms? And in fact, what are logarithms? Well, if you look at the data now above me, what do you notice? Well, I've said I've gone into and done some sort of an experiment and every day I'm gonna walk in and count, let's say bacteria in a Petri dish. Now bacteria are known for growing really, really quickly, very much like babies. So, you know, when, uh, when the little fishy thing goes into the eggy thing, then there's subdivision of cells. And we have two cells and four cells and eight cells and 16 cells and 32 cells. And it keeps exploding until strangely enough, we end up looking like this if you're really unlucky or looking like you if you're really, really lucky. And so I'm gonna walk in and I'm gonna count bacteria. And this table says on day one, there were five cells in my Petri dish. Okay, I counted, click, 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 and then I walked out. Now the thing was, I'm not very good at going back, and I went back on day 10. And actually day 10, there were four and a half cells. I don't quite know what happened to the, uh, the half a cell, but okay, fair enough. And then I thought, well, this isn't really going very well. I was expecting this explosion, so I went back on the 100th day, the 1000th day, the 10,000th day, the 100,000th day, and it's really hard to say that quickly. Now, obviously, trying to plot that on a graph would be really, really challenging. Bearing in mind, when we have an x-axis, we normally go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We may even go up in 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But we wouldn't have a scale or an axis that goes on for too long. We try and fit our data into that. Could you imagine what this would actually look like? Imagine I'm drawing this line now. Imagine this is 0, and always down here is the 1. Maybe here is 10, maybe up here is 100, maybe over here is 1,000, maybe all the way over here is 10,000, and then, well, we won't even get to 100,000 or a million. And basically, we'd have a little kiss at 5, a little kiss at 4.5, and maybe a kiss at 6, maybe a kiss at 9.8, and I know I'm doing this very accurately, but what do you notice? This data is massively spread out. So far, in fact, it would make no sense to us whatsoever. We couldn't look at any patterns, we couldn't look at any relationships that we're having between this data. And so actually, it would be amazing if we could actually come up with a whole new number system. Now I don't mean some sort of Star Trek or Klingon or I don't know, some sort of system. But let's go back to what we were actually uh, looking at before. So this is my table, but funnily enough written in an exactly different way, in a really different way. So we know that 10 to the power of zero is the same as one. Anything to the power of zero is actually always one. We know that 10 to the power of one is really a 10. We know 10 to the power of two is 100. 10 to the power of three is 1,000. 10 to the power of four is equal to 10,000. And so it goes on. And so confirming or checking this with the table above, we said that one could be written as 10 to the power of zero, tick. We said 10 could be written as 10 to the power of one, tick. 100 could be written as 10 squared, 1,000, 10 cubed, and so it goes on. So what I've now done is I've taken my table here, as you can see, 
and I've effectively just renamed the x values, 10 to the power of 0, 10 to the power of 1, 10 to the power of 2. But again, that hasn't made it any better. If I still try and draw this, we know 10 to the power of 0 is 1, we know 10 to the power of 1 is 10, that's 100, well, that's 1,000, this would somewhere over here be 10,000. It's really not helped us, or has it? Well, what if we changed 10 to the power of 0 and just said, okay, we'll redefine that, or we'll now think of that as 0. We'll take the power as the counting number. What about if we had 10 to the power of 1, and we said, let's just make that 1. And 10 to the power of 2, make it 2. 10 to the power of 3 becomes 3. And you see what suddenly has happened? Well, my old values were written here. So 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. And we're now saying, well, let's actually redefine my number system. Let's call it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're actually going to make the powers the new number system. And if we were to draw that, well, once we label our graphs, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we got the values of uh, 0 would now be 5, 1 would be 4.5, 2 would be 6, 3 would be 9.8, 4 would be way up here, and 5 would be actually massively down here. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video, and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mathsguru.com, yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions, and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much, take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.